Want to miss out? Be soon. Remind me to watch Chicago Fire on the Tuesdays. Ever wonder why they call it the American Dream and not the American Goal? The plan. Maybe it's because in dreams you can do anything. In dreams you can hold your entire world in the palm of your hand and turn time inside out again and again. And you can do it all. Sure, this will be about me. But is it a McDouble with extra pickles, a side of fries, and a high C at home? Don't be ridiculous. Sorry, fellas, it's soft. This is soft. Oh, shut up. Excuse me. Roll it right back, everybody. Shine Ultra Soft is so cushion soft, you'll want more, but it's so absorbent, you can use less. Enjoy the go with Shine. The extra twinkle. That extra swagger. Feeling healthy by leaps and bounds. Making a dinner that makes them a whole day. And giving your best friend the best nutrients for their best life. We know this story, the endless quest for your perfect foundation. With Sephora's exclusive Color IQ technology, we'll guide you to a shade you'll love. Come in and discover your match at Sephora. My moderate to severe black psoriasis, the burning, the itching, the stinging, my skin was no longer mine. I learned Tremphia. With Tremphia, most people saw 90% clear skin at 16 weeks. The majority of people saw 90% clear skin even at 5 years. Tremphia is the first medication of its kind, also approved for adults with active psoriatic arthritis. And it's 6 doses a year after 2 starter doses. Serious allergic reactions may occur. Tremphia may increase your risk of infections and lower your ability to fight them. Tell your doctor if you have an infection or symptoms, or if you had a vaccine or plan to. Emerge Tremphiant with Tremphia. Ask your doctor about Tremphia today. Straight A students start the debate team. She says she doesn't remember anything. We need to find out why she set the bus on fire. You can tell us what happened. This is ready. Come on, on. Any questions? Yeah, I got one. How about the best network imaginable? Let's invent that. That's what we do here. Quick, Who wants to 
looks at it, and to like pretty much everywhere. And it means to like sweet, like super, 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 super sweet. Hey, should you be drinking that? It's me, yeah. Because we're busy living. We don't have time for a lot of fuck, right? Who doesn't want any of that that helps AI do your homework even faster? Come again, what was that? Introducing the next generation 10G network, only from Xfinity. The future starts now. I was so concerned about his aunt that he forgot that he left his car on the side of the road with the keys. Oh, he forgot? He just didn't care. He wasn't going to the hospital until his aunt was out of surgery. Then she's going to be okay? I don't know. He left when she was so sedated. Hope he gets some rest too, poor guy. Oh, he won't. He insisted on coming out of the ship. I'm sure he needs a distraction. Heard about your aunt. She gonna be okay? She was stable last I checked, so that's good. See the one behind the wheel? No, some random who picked up at the bar. The guy has a suspended license, blood alcohol level twice the legal limit, walks away with cuts and bruises. Always the ones that fall if you don't get hurt. Yo, 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 my people. Last time we spoke. What's up, y'all? Why not? Here come another reaction. Think this is on you? Off the this one is on her politics. She's perfectly capable of scoring uh, the black story of you. Cameron Terrell, Rolling Rolling, like rolling 90 so. Crit. Uh, I don't know nothing about Cameron Terrell, but uh, all I know hey, is he's a young nigga. You feel me? From uh, Rolling yeah. 90 Crit. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty when sure he's younger than me. So, uh, okay. yeah, I wouldn't doctor, know a story, so let's hear it, let's get into it. Boy from the rolling 90s neighborhood Crips, which is a gang located on the west side of South Central Los Angeles. The facts of the case are as follows. When the average person thinks of South Central Los Angeles, the things that often come to mind are crime, poverty, and gangs. But just outside of the boundaries of South Central lies an abundance of wealth. A few miles north are the streets of the Hollywood Hills and Beverly Hills. A few miles west lies the beach cities of Santa Monica, Venice, and Marina del Rey. And just a few miles south are the upscale cities of Rolling Hills and Palos Verdes. Normally, these two worlds don't mix. But in 2017, a young man named Cameron Terrell made national headlines when he crossed that boundary and stepped into the rolling 90s, which is one of the most reputable gangs in South Central Los Angeles. Palos Verdes is an upscale city filled with cliffside homes, top-rated schools, golf courses, and country clubs. Cameron Terrell was raised here. His mother, Deborah Terrell, is an interior designer with a list of wealthy clients. His father, Donald Wayne Terrell, is president of New and Improved Media, a media consulting company based in El Segundo, California. The Terrell family lives in a 4,000 square foot home that is valued at around $1.8 million. They would often take lavish vacations and attend parties thrown by their wealthy clients and neighbors. Cameron drove a black Mercedes Benz, wore designer clothes, and was given a healthy allowance. Cameron attended Palos Verdes High School which is one of the top rated schools in Southern California. By all accounts, the Terrell family was living the American dream, but behind closed doors, the family was in turmoil. Cameron and his parents didn't get along, which led to daily arguments. Cameron began to rebel against his parents, would often run away from home. There are a lot of rumors regarding Cameron and how he initially connected with people in South Central. Some say it was through drugs, and some say it was through social media. But one thing is clear, once Cameron made his way to South Central, he became infatuated with the streets. Cameron became good friends with one of the boys there. He would stay at his house for days, weeks, and months at a time, and would even call the boy's mother, mom. Some time later, the boy was being courted by the rolling 90s Crips and told Cameron he should also join. Cameron jumped at the opportunity, and shortly afterwards, the two boys were initiated into the game at Jesse Owens Park, which is a stronghold of the rolling 90s. Cameron dove headfirst into the gang life. He was given the nicknames Milk, White Boy, and Bright Eyes. 
He would get clothing made with his gang and nickname in large letters. He even got a tattoo of the Washington Nationals logo on his chest, which is the logo the Rolling 90s adopted to represent Western Do you want to grow your YouTube channel? Do you want to earn more views, more subscribers, more watch time, and of course, make more money? Well, it might be time for you to upgrade to TubeBuddy Pro. Western Avenue. That's crazy, man. Like, this dude lives in the upper city. His mom got everything. Like, the dude had everything, bro. Like, he had a big-ass house. They had nice cars. He go on boat trips. And you, instead, you chose to go down to the city where these people are trying to make a living, where poverty sets in, where people are getting robbed and, and shot and all this shit, you chose to go down to the city and start gangbanging. When you live in the upper hills, you got all this stuff. Man, damn. You know, a street that stretches through the heart of their territory. It's safe to say that Cameron adapted to the gang lifestyle as the years went on. He was from Palos Verdes, but he called South Central home in the rolling 90s and Bracelet. It's been said that Cameron was no stranger to crime, and he indulged in everything the gang lifestyle had to offer. Things like drugs, robbery, and murder. On the morning of October 1st, 2017, Cameron and two other young men were riding in his black Mercedes Benz. The group was armed as they entered the territory of a longtime rival gang, the a Trey Gangster Crips. The rivalry between the Rolling 90s Crips and the a Trey Gangster Crips goes back decades, and fights and shootings aren't uncommon between the neighboring gangs. Around 11.26 a.m., a 21-year-old man named Justin Holmes was walking down the street with two other people. As the group walked down 78th Street towards Western Avenue, they were approached by two men. The two men asked them what gang they were from. Holmes replied that he didn't gangbang. One of the men put out a chrome revolver from his sweater and began to open fire. Holmes was shot as the two people with him ran away. The suspects ran to a waiting black sedan and fled down an alley near Western Avenue. The two people that were walking with Holmes ran to a nearby store and called for help. They then returned to the scene of the shooting and stayed with Holmes until help arrived. Holmes was taken to the hospital and pronounced dead at 12.02 p.m. The autopsy would later show that he was shot twice, including a fatal shot to the back. Detectives working the case began their investigation. They began to look into the background of Holmes in an effort to find a motive for the murder. They found that Holmes, nor the people he was walking with, had any gang affiliation. Holmes was a college student and had a job working for U-Haul. He had a day off from work and decided to hang with some friends. One of the people with Holmes during the shooting picked out the gunman from a photographic lineup. The shooter was a 16-year-old gang member. Investigators then swept the area looking for other witnesses when they noticed a surveillance camera near the scene. They contacted the owner and asked for the camera footage. Upon reviewing the video, detectives saw the two suspects get into a waiting black Mercedes Benz and speed off. Immediately, Cameron became a prime suspect. Police knew Cameron due to interactions at Jesse Owens Park in early 2017 and knew he drove a black Mercedes Benz. Detectives interviewed Cameron about the murder. He admitted to driving the car at the time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And then you go take two niggas, you go take two black people in your Mercedes Benz, your car, your personal car, your personal vehicle, and go do it. Did I miss something here? Did I miss something here? No, you just got your butt in trouble. For what reason? Where you got all this? In the upper town. You don't have to do all this. 
Never mind, man. I'm missing something, man. Cameron was arrested on October 12th, and his bail was set at $5 million. The two young men that were with Cameron were also arrested on October 12th. When the police searched the home of the shooter, they found a Chrome 38 Special Revolver. He would later admit to shooting homes. The names of Cameron's accomplices weren't released because they were both minors at the time of the murder. Whereas Cameron was 18 years old, illegally an adult at the time of the murder. Cameron and his two co-defendants were charged with one count of premeditated murder and two counts of attempted murder with gang enhancements. The news of a wealthy white team playing a part in the murder of an innocent black man in South Central quickly made national headlines. They did not only that. You're going to jail for life. Like you're never getting out. Like this just became your life. You can't snitch on them two black people. And your car was involved. And you got premeditated murder. Two counts. Always moving forward. Movado SE. Wow, bro. You dug yourself a grave. Wow. People wonder, how did this happen? And what will be the outcome? Cameron sat in jail for about a week, but was released when his family posted $500,000 on the $5 million bond. Cameron's two accomplices remained in jail. Cameron's family was shunned by their Palos Verdes community. Clients stopped doing business with his family, and students, parents, and staff at Palos Verdes High School did not want Cameron to continue his senior year at the school, stating that they felt unsafe and uncomfortable with him attending. The school and the Terrell family agreed to let Cameron complete his studies off campus. Cameron pled not guilty to all charges, and his trial began on July 3rd, 2000. Epidemic Sound is basically a royalty-free soundtrack company. Good. So it's where I go to when I want to get my backing tracks for my YouTube videos. Pick whatever. 2018. Cameron was represented by an attorney named. Okay, he got out. All right. We're gonna get out of your hair. He got out on bond, and he got kicked out all his rich school. Like, oh, of course, yeah, go away, babe. Bro, nobody feels safe with you now. You done damaged your whole life, bro. For what? You had everything. This is stupidity right here. This all this is, bro. Learn from this dude. Javon Blackmail. Blackmail told the court that Cameron was a good kid from a good home and the case was a result of blatant overcharging. He went on to say that Cameron didn't know the two men were armed when they entered his vehicle and when he drove into rival gang territory, he thought the two men got out of the car to go tag a wall. Blackmail said that Cameron wouldn't have used his dad's car if he was planning to kill someone. He was shocked when he heard the gunfire. He stated that Cameron sped away as a matter of survival and not in an attempt to flee the scene of a crime. Oh, so and now he dry snitching. Now you know what you've been missing. Oh, wow. Years. <laughs> That's crazy. The prosecution painted Cameron as a wolf in sheep's clothing. They presented a stack of evidence in hopes of proving Cameron as an active member of the Rolling 90s and a willing participant in the murder of Justin Holmes. The evidence against Cameron included the following. A shirt with the name Milk in light blue letters, which was found in his Mercedes Benz. Pictures and videos of Cameron with known gang members wearing gang colors and throwing up gang signs. A Washington Nationals logo tattoo on Cameron's chest, which is meant to represent Western Avenue, a street that stretches through Rolling 90s territory. Other evidence included scenes from a music video called The N.A. Chantham. The N.A. Chantham is a song featuring rappers from various gangs under the neighborhood Crip umbrella. The rappers diss rival gangs and showed their allegiance to the neighborhood Crips. Hence the title, in a Anthem. Cameron can be spotted in multiple scenes of the video. Hold on, hold on. He was in this video? Oh, wow. I never noticed that. Oh, wow. I, I always watch the video and I never noticed him. Oh, wow. That's, that was him and those dudes that 
Oh, wow, bro. These dudes are locked up for... Oh, wow, that's crazy. And now, that's probably was right after this video. They did that murder. She's got a tough Okay, thank you. Amongst a sea of gang members, sporting a light blue bandana around his neck. The prosecution went on to explain that Cameron would have earned status among the rolling 90s if he ventured into a trade gangster crib territory and killed a rival gang member. The prosecution also showed a video that was taken by Cameron of gang members kicking over the candles at Justin Holmes Memorial. Javon Blacknell stated that Cameron was living a fantasy and he was unaware of the real life consequences of his choices. He went on to say that Cameron was influenced by music and movements. When asked about the tattoo on Cameron's chest, Blacknell said Cameron got the tattoo because Kevin Durant has one, and Durant is his favorite basketball player. Blacknell called character witnesses to testify on Cameron's behalf. All of them said they didn't think he would murder another human being. Jurors deliberated for nearly a week before reaching a verdict. The jury found Cameron Terrell not guilty on all charges. Cameron spoke to the press after the verdict. I said, rest in peace, Justin Holmes. He should have died that day, and, you know, I pray for his family every night. This has been weighing on me every single day of my life. I don't have to explain myself to anyone. God knows what really happened that day, and God knows what was in my head that day. The verdict caused national outrage and sparked conversations about white privilege and classism. A lot of people compared Cameron's case to the case of Ethan Couch. Ethan Couch was 16 years old when he decided to drive drunk. Ethan lost control of the vehicle and killed four people. During the trial, Ethan's lawyer argued that because the Couch family is so well off, Ethan never had to suffer consequences for his actions, so he didn't understand right from wrong. The attorney went on to say that Ethan suffered from a condition called affluenza. Ethan received 10 years of probation. Cameron's two co-defendants await trial. Since they were both 16 years old at the time of the murder, their cases went to juvenile court. The district attorney wants to move their cases to adult court so they can be tried as adults. I want to thank you guys for tuning in. Please like, comment, and subscribe. That's crazy, bro. Like, yeah, that's white privilege stuff, bro. Like, oh, God. Like, it's, like them black kings didn't, they didn't get out. They didn't bail out. No, none of that. They didn't go to court. No, none of that. All he do with the court was a white boy. That's crazy. But uh, anyway, like I said, if you ain't a mean mugging family member, please, 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 please become one. Press that subscribe button, please. I would show like it if you have pressed that subscribe button, the, notifi the notification bell button, and press those thumbs up on this video, this reaction. We out.